Hey guys, Gameboy3 hung here once again back in Horizon 5. The AMC Gremlin is on the top of the leaderboard for the NASCAR series. Can you believe it? It's beaten Pontiacs, it's beaten Impalas, it's beaten Classic Fords, it's beaten everything so far. It's just actually dumb. How is the Gremlin the top NASCAR so far? Keep in mind, this series we don't engine swap and they gotta stay with their stock drive line. So none of them are all-wheel drive swapped, none of them are LS swapped. Granted, we are in D-Class, so anything that can do that would be silly, but still. I think we need to give Pontiac a fair shot to shoot back. This will be probably the torquiest engine we've seen so far this series. 337 horsepower, 550 torque, 4,000 pounds. The 77 Pontiac is one of my go-to online cars for low-class racing because a stock engine is so good for torque. How will it do around an oval circuit, though? That's going to be a bit different to say. It is a four-speed, and all four gears seem to be uh, good gearing-wise. Like, top gear is not an overdrive gear. It's a heavy car, so I have the bumps and the and springs a little bit stiffer than regular. Pontiac is ready to try to reclaim its leaderboard. The twin turbos, I guess obviously, but still. Six grand once again. Will we use four gears or three gears with this car? Possibly three. Maybe four. How are we for grip? We're good for grip. I don't think that's going to be our issue. Main issue will be drag and speed. All right, so first flying lap. It doesn't seem like we're that bad. Tried something different there. It did not work out too well. Hmm. It's... Not too far behind, but it's not as close as I would have wanted. Fourth gear? For more torque, maybe? I'll try fourth gear for a lap or two. Because this engine's starting point is its torque. Yeah, looks like we were a little bit ahead of it that time around. I just need to maybe lift right before the turn so I can get the front end to bite more. That's a bit too much for spinning. Not all the way around that time, but that was a little bit too close for comfort. I'm not sure what gear is best. I'm going to leave it in the fourth, though, because of the extra torque. And the uh, fourth gear is actually not terrible, because it's not, like, extended. It does shorten up for, I guess, high speed. There we go. This is a closer lap. Close enough, though. 
I don't think so. Actually can get beneath the gremlin for the first part of that turn, but uh, it's not enough. Yeah, it's not going to work. Pontiac tried its best. Is that the best time for Pontiac? Uh, no, 23.6 was the time of the other Pontiac. So around this track, the 87 Pontiac is fit, uh, faster than the 77. But it's a good showing. This is still one of my go-to cars for D-Class and C-Class racing. Give it up for the Pontiac. It tried its very best couldn't reclaim the lead. Alright, so next vehicle. I can't believe the gremlin's on top. Next vehicle, I don't know what it's going to be. my hand go through the steering wheel when I shift? Yeah, it does. <laughs> uh, never change Forza. Yeah, it's 0 0.7 mile, not even a one mile overall. All right, so. I'll just use something with decent handling. That seems like this Corvette could have a good chance at it. And I was going to say it's pro-charged like the Luder, but no. The Luder is twin turbo. We'll try the Corvette anyways. Just uh, see how another classic American car can handle a classic American race. We have five gears in this car. Will we use all five gears? Probably not. I have the springs a little bit different because it is a lightweight car. We have like no front arrow, even with them maxed out, so that's a bit odd, but oh well. We have white walls on this car, but I'm pretty sure it comes with white walls from the factory. Got a Percharger on a straight six engine. First non V8, I think. That's interesting. Yeah, it would be the first non V8, because even the ancient Forge had flyhead V8s. Alright, the Corvette is just as small as the Gremlin. Will that work for us, though? Will we have as much grip or more? Because that does not seem like we have enough speed. Can we even crack 100? Only just. And that's without, you know, braking or turning in early for that turn. So probably not even 100 miles an hour on a fast lap, you know? Oh, look at this. We actually can get ahead of it in turn one. It's a bit surprising, I'll be honest. Looks like we can stay bottom part of the turn all the way around. So that's neat to see, I guess.
Corvette's not even hit, doing that bad. Is it doing as good as I wanted it to? Not exactly, considering how good I know the Corvette can be, especially the 1960 one. But, for this one, I don't know. I guess I was expecting more for the barn find car. Bit of a slide there, did not need that. And I hit the apron there. So, next couple laps I think are gone. Because I won't have the speed for this oncoming lap here. Yep, so it's going to be like a two-lap shootout at the very end here. But like a couple tenths down, it's not even bad. Like against like any other car other than the Pontiac 87, uh, this would have been an astounding time. Tiny bit of a slide there. Gremlin is faster than us, oddly enough. It's all about, can I keep it controlled? Not this time around. One last lap, though. Nah, gains too much on the straight. As little as the straight is, it does gain on it. We got close, you know, two tenths down. Corvette just wasn't gonna have it though. That's it for this episode. If you enjoyed the Pontiac trying to reclaim but failing, and then Chevy trying to claim but fail, can leave a like, favorite, comment, share, and of course don't forget to subscribe as well. Thanks, Gambia. I'll see you all in the future.